So we finished up the sermon series on uh, E100, and then that launched us right into uh, go into the Advent season. Uh, and then I've been praying about what what to preach about We're coming out of Advent. And uh, so last week I had a message on my heart and I delivered and I talked about the importance of time and spending it wisely. And I found a book in Pastor Dave's library. I inherited some of his books. And this, I'm guessing we did this study in the 80s as a church, but it was how to be a Christian and still enjoy life. Interesting, huh? You know, I think about so often um, the idea of Christianity is associated with boring, mundane. And my experience has been, it couldn't have been further from the truth. I grew up in a church about this size, and we lived life together, and we just had a ball. I remember my parents getting together with other parents, and we would get together, and we would ride motorcycles, ride horses, uh, play games. We played a lot of backyard football, and it was just so much fun. And so in my head, when I think of being a Christian, that's what I think of. I don't think of being a a prude or anything like that. And so I think it's important for us, I I want to address this and let's talk about it. And so our key question today is how do we experience the joy Paul wrote about that Janae read? Our key idea is joy can come from transforming our beliefs into values. Joy can come from a lot of places. We know that it comes from the Lord and it's not dependent on our situation. Uh, But one thing about it is when our beliefs match our values, it helps bring joy in our life. When there's a disconnect, we kind of struggle with that. Our key scripture is from Philippians 1. 3-4. Three through four. I won't read that. I'll read it a little bit later. But just know that's our key scripture. This particular sermon series is going to be a study through Philippians, and in particular, it's looking at uh, some of the beliefs and values that uh, Paul found important and that he wrote to the people of Philippi. But before we dive into that, I want you to stop and think about the idea of your beliefs, my beliefs. Here's what the dictionary says. Uh, The definition of beliefs, something believed. Wow, that was brilliant dictionary. I would have never put that together, right? Something believed. But it is a conviction or a confidence in that you know the truth. Right? So you believe, your belief system is is that of which you know are true. Uh, Then you think about values. So you have beliefs and then you have values. And sometimes we, we maybe get them confused. Here's what values are. Ideals, customs, institutions of society towards which the people of the group have an effective regard. So you catch... Beliefs are more internally focused. It's things that we possess on the inside. Values are things that we, we externalize our beliefs. It is putting our beliefs into action. And so it's important to understand that we have beliefs and they really need to match our values, right? And in the book of Philippians... He didn't originally necessarily set out to write this idea of beliefs and values, but that's ultimately what he wrote. And so here's some of the the different values that he wrote about. The importance of praise and thanksgiving. He, He valued love and spiritual insight. Paul valued commitment and discipline. He valued unity and humility. He valued integrity, righteousness in Christ. 
You can find all of these things in the book of Philippians, and we'll be looking at them deeper in future sermons. Righteousness in Christ. He valued perseverance and goal setting. He valued prayer, valued sound thinking and success and contentment. All of those things Paul wrote about and said these things are important. And so when we look at the opening of Philippians, remember he was writing this in prison with chains on. I thank God in all my remembrance of you, always offering prayer with joy in my every prayer for you all. And then he goes on to say, for I'm confident of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will perfect it until the day of Christ Jesus. He believed that God was at work in our lives. And so here he was in the midst of persecution, praying for other people. He was praying for the people of Philippi, and he was in prayer with joy. How do you have joy when you're in prison? And yet, he did. And so, I'm going to leave Philippians for a moment, and I'm going to spend the rest of the time looking back through Peter's life and ch- kind of chasing his beliefs and values, all right? And so this will take us into the book of Matthew and then into uh, the book of Acts. And so the first thing is, um, Peter was known for voicing s- his strong beliefs. He had strong beliefs, and he was a, kind of a boisterous, bold guy. Peter was the one who was always out in the forefront. It it started with, Peter was one of the first disciples called by Jesus. Jesus called him from being a fisherman and said, follow me. And he was often one of the first ones listed whenever it talked about the disciples. And so Peter really was the prominent leader of the disciples. And I always like to point out Um, Not only was he listed first, but he was often one of the three that Jesus would pull out. It was Peter, James, and John. Uh, Jesus had special things for those three to learn and do. But then, more than that, oftentimes Jesus would pull out Peter himself, and it was just Jesus and Peter. And so Jesus leaned on Peter big time and expected a lot out of Peter. And so here he was. He was the prominent leader. He was a spokesperson of the twelve. He would often um, say, now hold on. Explain this parable to us. We don't understand it. What are you talking about, Jesus? He was bold enough to ask questions and to admit, I don't know what you're talking about. And so that was Peter and who he was. And then Jesus ultimately told him that he was the rock. In Matthew 16, 18, um, this is what kind of the, the discourse with Jesus was. I also say to you that you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overpower it. Now, scholars will say, now wait a minute, he wasn't saying that he was building his church on Peter, but yet Peter's name meant rock. And he said, upon this rock, I will build my church. It was like a double meaning. Yes, he was going to build the church there, but he was also going to utilize Peter to do it. And we know that Peter did uh, help build the church. And so uh, he definitely uh, put... Peter up there and knew that he was going to need to use him. And then Peter confessed that Jesus was the Christ. He said, you are the Christ. He was voicing these strong beliefs. He understood who Jesus was. Quite frankly, at that time, maybe he was the only disciple that that knew he was the Christ. In, In Matthew 16, Jesus said, but who do you say that I am? 
Well, let me back up. He said, who, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And the disciples said, some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, but still others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. And he said to them, but who do you say I am? You know, internalizing it. Who do you, what is your belief? And Peter answered, of course it was Peter that answered first. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Whoa, he would have gotten a star that day in Sunday school. That was the right answer. And Jesus knew that Peter knew. He got it. And he confessed with his mouth that he was the Christ. Again, Peter had strong beliefs. I always like to point out too in Matthew 14 that it was Peter who got out of the boat. And so in Matthew 14, um, Jesus spoke to them. They were in the boat and there was um, here he was coming walking on water. And he says, take courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. And in verse 28, Peter said to him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And he said, come. And Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came toward Jesus. You see, he understood who Jesus was. He believed in Jesus and believed that he could walk on the water. But then, in Matthew 26, 31, uh, Peter is confronted with a situation that he didn't want to find himself in. This was at the Lord's Supper. And Jesus said to the disciples, You will all fall away because of me this night. This idea of fall away, it actually means that you're trapped in a threatening situation and you want to flee. You want to run away because of your own personal danger. That's, that's a lot of meaning packed in one little word. But, but the imagery is that you were going to flee from that spot. You were going to fall away. And he said, it's written, I will strike down the shepherd and the sheep of the flock that shall be scattered. But after I have been raised, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. But Peter said to him, again, Peter was telling him his belief, even though all may fall away because of you, I never will. Can't you picture Peter saying that? Like, Jesus, what you just said is absurd. I would never, ever fall away from you. I would never flee because of danger. I would run into the danger. But then we know that he goes on to tell him, Truly I say to you that this very night before a rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Peter wasn't scared to tell people about his beliefs, was he? And he demonstrated it. But we all know that his beliefs were tested as well. So you think about your own beliefs. You, you may or may not even fully understand your own beliefs. But from time to time they get tested. And in this case... Uh, Peter in 26.45 was when Jesus had asked them to stay watch and to pray for Him. And here Peter and the disciples kept falling asleep. This was the last moment they could spend with Jesus. He was about to be arrested and to put on trial and ultimately die. And here they were sleeping instead of being with Jesus. And he says, Are you still sleeping and resting? Behold, the hour is at hand and the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let us be going. Behold, the One who betrays Me is at hand. And so there they were tested and failed. And then right after that, in verse 31, uh, he cut his, he cut the 
ear off of the high priest. Now you may say, I always thought, well, that's loyalty, right? He was defending Jesus, and they come to arrest him, so he cut his ear off. That's loyalty. Or was it? If he would have been in the garden praying with him, would he have known that this was part of God's will? That it, he was going to have to be arrested? And then we know that Jesus, that um, Peter ultimately deserted Jesus and fled when Jesus was arrested. In Matthew 26.55, at that time, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as you would against a robber? Every day, I used to sit in the temple teaching, and you didn't seize me. But all this has taken place to fulfill the Scriptures of the prophets. And then all the disciples left Him and fled. They fell away. They fled for their own personal safety. Peter was in that mix. They deserted Jesus when, they, when He needed them the most. And then we know in Matthew 26, 69, Peter denied Jesus three times. Not once, but three times as he was told. You see, their beliefs were tested. And they failed. Not all the time. Some of the time. Our beliefs are tested on a daily basis. And we need to strive to let them transform us. And so then we go on and observe Peter's life. And Peter went on to grow from all of these experiences. Do you remember when Jesus came back and He went straight to Peter? Well, maybe not straight to Peter, but He went to Peter. Found Him on the shoreline doing what He did best. And Jesus went to Peter and said, Do you love Me? Three times. He asked, do you love me? And each time, Peter said he did. I think that was as much for Peter to remind Peter that he still was going to build the church upon him. And he was going to use Peter for great, great things. And so it was this whole process of transforming Peter's beliefs into values. And so we learn that Peter believed in God's redemption. And in Acts 2.14, he preached all about it. A lengthy sermon. He went out and, and just preached the Gospel and told them all about who Jesus was. He was bold. And ultimately in 36, Acts 2.36, Therefore let all the house of Israel know for certain that God has made Him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Whoa. Boldness. He was taking what He believed and transforming it into action and into His value system and structure. He also believed in the healing power that God has. He believed it. You know, it's one thing to say, I believe that God will heal. But it's another thing to pray for healing and to expect God to heal. And so in 4.29, said, And now, Lord, take note of their threats and grant that your bondservant may speak your word with all confidence while you extend your hand to heal and signs and wonders take place through the name of your holy servant Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place where they had gathered together was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak the Word of God with boldness. Their beliefs 
we're being transformed into values, into action. Peter believed in the message of Jesus. He had been arrested, he had been flogged, and was told never ever to preach about Jesus again. What did he do? Immediately went out and started preaching. Because nothing was going to stop him. If you believe what you believe, then nothing can stop you. He also believed the Great Commission. The Great Commission to go out into the world. And that's exactly what Peter did. He went out and spread God's Word. And ultimately, the church grew and grew and grew. He also, God reached him through a dream. And, and he was told that the Gentiles were to also receive the message of Christ. That the message was for him. Or for them. And so, Peter went to Cornelius to tell him of this great news. He was faithful with the message that God entrusted him. You see through Peter's life, it started out with him learning the beliefs, and then he tested those beliefs in real life, and they ultimately became values that he would act upon. We are in a time where we need to be able to act on our beliefs. As they're being tested, we need to be willing to take a stand and say, this is what I believe. So how now shall I live? I want to encourage you to discover the biblical principles, morals, doctrines, and beliefs. Dig into God's Word and understand what He says about any given subject. And develop your belief in that. And understand that it will be tested. But in the end, that testing will only strengthen and modify your belief. And ultimately, you'll learn to make those beliefs part of you and your personality. People won't be surprised at your belief because you'll be living them out through and through. And then act on them daily during the opportunities that they arise. Right? Your beliefs should be transforming how you view and act out in your life. But understand, just like Peter, you won't get it perfect all the time. That's where you all gasp. What? No, we're not perfect, are we? And so as we're discovering our biblical principles, morals, and doctrines, and beliefs, and we're learning how to make them apply in our life, and we're acting out, we understand that we may fail a time or two. And then the last challenge is live from the inside out. Do what you say you believe is true. If you believe that it is true, or you believe that God said it's true, or you believe to your core what the Bible says, then we act upon it, don't we? And in the end, by doing that, when you're in that sweet spot where, you're, where your beliefs match your values, you will discover joy. People sometimes, have you ever discovered this? People are watching Christians to see how they handle life. How they handle good times. How they handle bad times. They're observing. 
And every once in a while they show up and they say, I don't know what you have, but I want it. Our life can be a walking billboard for Christ by merely being faithful. And sometimes you're going to find yourself taking a stand and you're the only one standing. And that's not fun. It's not easy. And it's lonely. But in the end, people will know what your beliefs are and what your values are and that you actually live by them. Because what good are beliefs if you're not going to follow them? I want to invite the band to come up. I don't know where you're at today. I don't know if you need prayer for something. Maybe you've never put your faith, hope, and trust in Jesus Christ. The One worth following. You can come and let me pray with you. We'll pray. But won't you come? Let's stand and sing.